All right, so I'm watching this uh, Jack Smack video yesterday talking about scriptural mutilation. And in this video somewhere, he says something about this idea of a coming tribulation. All right, and so in my view, this is a, uh, a futurist viewpoint. All right, so the beautiful thing about the futurist viewpoint is that you can just take whatever you don't understand and say, oh, that's going to happen in the future. All right, of course, you're going to have a problem when Jesus comes and those things that you said were going to happen in the future, in your mind, they haven't happened yet. So Jesus is going to come and squash that idea that you once had. All right, so let's just talk about this idea of a coming tribulation. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about a seven-year tribulation. And this idea is not in the Bible anywhere at all. And I'm telling you, I've seen this and studied this for quite a while. And it's very clear to me that people that teach a seven-year tribulation are also teaching that Jesus is the Antichrist and I'm gonna show you you can't get around it so anyway you know and I love Jack Smack I sub, sub to his channel but you know there's just so many people that got this doctrine wrong and they're getting it from other people they're not getting it from the Bible and this is the problem that I have and this is why I feel it imperative to preach on this topic day after day. Now, in my response to his video, I just uh, highlight a few verses, a couple of verses here about you know John or Jesus. Uh, John says, or how do I say this? Jesus says in the book of John, "These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world." Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And Mark, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is another one right here. This is probably a whole other topic, but all this is saying, all Jesus is saying in Mark 13, 13, is that there are going to be people being saved all the way until the end you'll notice right after that I believe it he says that um, but for the elect's sake those days should be shortened and except those days be shortened no flesh should be saved right so if things were to continue then no flesh would be saved but for the elect's sakes those days have been shortened so all this really all this is talking about is people are going to be saved all the way until the end and it's interesting because also in Luke 18 verse 8 Jesus says I tell you that he will avenge them speedily those of those of us that are saved nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on earth right so it's pretty clear to me that there's not going to be very many saved people on earth and I can't help but wonder are there very many people saved on earth today really um, and then all right so and okay so here let me read this in the end of the the end is the end of the world I mean it should be pretty simple right so like in Matthew 24 Jesus is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven that's pretty simple but it's amazing how many people got this wrong. They, a lot of people teach that the end of the world is not the end of the world. It's incredible. They say, oh, there's a thousand year period coming after the end of the world. And they'll even go so far to say that there's unsaved people living after the end of the world. Well, if that's the case, then it's not the end of the world. And it's, a, it's incredible, really, because they describe the things that are going to happen in this thousand-year period as the same things that are happening right now. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. All right, so um, 
Uh, so I just point out, hey, there's never coming a time when Dan Rather is going to come on TV and say the tribulation is here. The tribulation is already here. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And we see numerous scripture where things are getting worse and worse and worse. And even in uh, Daniel 12, you know, and then I quote uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 13, Evil men and seducers shall, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Things are getting worse and worse and worse. The good news is, Jesus is going to deliver us out of this wicked world. There is no seven year tribulation found anywhere at all in the Bible. <clears throat> and then of course, now this is what I want to talk about here. Daniel chapter 9. Jesus makes an end of sin. I quoted it exactly. Makes an end of sin. He did that to lay down his life for the sins of the world. If you say this is about the Antichrist, you're calling Jesus the Antichrist. And so, look, I get it. A lot of people teach this, but this idea of seven year tribulation is found nowhere at all in the Bible. And then Breezy uh, says, I'm incorrect uh, that uh, Jesus is apparently. In fact, the Antichrist. And it's weird that I would not preach that Jesus is the Antichrist. Weird. Well, there might be a reason why you think it's weird, but uh, look. All right, let me read this. Try to be as fair as possible. Okay, so, and it's weird that I still find this from time to time that people think Daniel 9, verse 27 is speaking about Jesus. You need to read Daniel 11, verse 31. In Matthew 24, verse 15, Daniel 11, 31 specifically indicates who is being spoken about in Daniel 9, verse 27. All right. <laughs> Let, they don't trust him. Yeah, they might got all this right. No. No. That one week is not a year right. <laughs> or seven years or whatever. It's not. And you're just straight up lying when you say it is because there is no um, mention at all yeah, okay there's two ways to break that apart but all right so if you go here let's see where am I at here right there okay so if you go 70 years there Daniel's trying to figure out the 70 years. The angel comes and, and says, hey, uh, there will be 70 weeks. <clears throat> so uh, what they say is, well, the, okay, so the 70 weeks is the 70 years. And then, um, am I saying that right? And then so how do you? So one week would be. You see what I'm getting at here? 70 years. I mean, oh my god, there it is. 70 weeks. So one week would be a year. Alright. <laughs> and then in the midst of one, so that would be one year, not seven years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. So let's, let's look at this here and consider the vision 70 weeks are determined upon the, thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins <laughs> you think the Antichrist is going to do this consider the vision no the Antichrist is never going to make an end of sins never it's never going to happen no matter how much you wish it, no matter how much you teach it, no matter how much you repeat it, it's never, ever going to happen. Jesus Christ has already done it all. Now, for crying out loud here. Okay, so let's go to what they claim. Okay, I mean, it's just... It's as clear as day. It's unbelievable. Messiah, 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 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. It's the Messiah. 
I mean, it's the Messiah. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He makes an end of sin and reconciliation for iniquity, and he brings in everlasting righteousness. It's Jesus. It's unbelievable, really. Okay, and so here, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week. Okay, so if you say, I mean, you have to go from 70 years to 70 weeks to a day is a year, and now in the midst of the week, which is three and a half days, so and now it's not seven years, it's three and a half years. And the whole thing doesn't make any sense, and I'm telling you, this is as simple as pumpkin pie. All right, I mean, it's simple. Because Jesus has already fulfilled this prophecy. It's already done. He, Jesus is the one. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation which is his return, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, which is the wrath of God. Now, Jesus is the one that gave his body as the the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world Jesus done it he did it he did it now it's I mean it sounds fantastic that hey that's not Jesus it's the Antichrist he's gonna come and make an end of sins oh that's fantastic yeah but I mean to some people that might seem exciting and interesting to me it's not it's confusion and it's utter uh, ignorance to be nice about it okay now let's go to uh, Daniel 11 verse 31 because he's he's wanting to make a case well because uh, Daniel 11 31 says this then that means Jesus is the Antichrist okay so let's find out what Daniel 11 31 says Let's see. Jesus is the Antichrist. Oh my goodness, he's right. No, it doesn't say that. All right, so you know, I would encourage you all to read. It's twelve chapters. Daniel's twelve chapters. I mean, if you're a slow reader like me, it takes an hour. Okay, so five minutes a chapter, twelve chapters, sixty minutes. I'm a slow reader. All right. Uh, for most people, it might take 30 minutes, but I, I'm slow. Slow-minded, slow everything. I'm slow. Okay, but still, even an hour is about how much time most people will spend watching, uh, you know, Netflix stuff. Or and a lot of people spend an hour, you know, doing the TikTok thing. Just watching, you know, 500 videos in an hour or whatever they do. You know, scroll one, blah, 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 scroll another, blah, 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 scroll another, blah, 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 blah. Ah, that's, you know, if that's fun for them, okay. I'm, I don't want to take anybody's joy away. But it's just not for me. But that, I mean, you consider that. If this is important to you, then just read it. And trust what the Word of God says. And stop trusting what other people are saying. This, here, when you read it, I mean, <laughs> it's so obvious. Daniel's talking about, first of all, he's talking about four beasts until the end of the world. And I and I mentioned this in the comment, in the response to his, okay, <laughs> that Daniel is talking about four beasts, and he mentions the first three beasts by name. Babylon, Medes and Persians, and the Greek Empire okay he does not mention the fourth empire because the fourth empire had not come along as of at that time all right so the fourth empire so you okay consider the third empire the Greek Empire when baby Jesus is born the Greek Empire is no longer in power so what's that mean the fourth beast must be there during that time all right, so the fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire. 
you can't get around that because we know the Romans killed Jesus right we know that now it was Jesus that laid down his life and it was the Jews that had him killed but it was the Roman soldiers that actually killed the Lord Jesus so now knowing that now read this and the arm shall stand on his part whose part this is talking about the fourth beast okay this is the fourth beast the beast that's more wicked richer than all the other beasts all right but it's still in the spirit of the first beast which is Babylon all right and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice what's that mean well that's pretty clear isn't it didn't I just tell you what it means you should have already known what it means the daily sacrifice is Jesus give us this day our daily bread that's Jesus Jesus is the Word of God Jesus is the Word of God is the bread the Word of God is the Bible and they take away the daily sacrifice when they killed him <clears throat> alright so there's one way of looking at this which is that hey Jesus makes an end of sins and reconciliation for iniquity and brings in everlasting righteousness and then there's the other side where the fourth beast kills the Lord Jesus alright they actually physically killed him and that's all this is talking about here alright it's, it's unbelievable that uh, somebody could take this and say <laughs> that the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins. What Breezy is saying, and I know they're getting this from somebody else, they're not getting it from the Bible. Breezy is saying that the Antichrist is going to take away the daily sacrifice so that means the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins and reconciliation for iniquity and brings in the everlasting righteousness because in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease claiming that the Antichrist is going to do this in the midst of the week is the seven year tribulation and um, I guess during the seven year tribulation the Antichrist is going to come and make an end of sins and I mean <laughs> you know you hear people harp about this oh replacement theology well this right here is replacement theology replacing Jesus Christ with the Antichrist it's unbelievable really there should be absolutely no doubt I mean if you are a true child of God and you're reading this there's in no way should this at all lead you to believe that the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins and reconciliation for iniquity and bring in everlasting righteousness I, there's no way the child of God should, should read that and see it that way there's just no way so when somebody argues like this and just outwardly it goes to all this time and trouble to say hey no it's the Antichrist it's not Jesus and to use strong language like absolutely ridiculous that Jesus would be the Christ <laughs> Jesus doesn't come in with an army to pollute the sanctuary of strength and to take away the daily sacrifice. Okay, well, 
uh, so you, this is in reference to uh, Daniel 11, which is speaking of the fourth beast. So this is you can't just go cherry pick this and cherry pick that and say this is coming from the same angle talking about the same thing. It is talking about the same thing, but from two different angles. And it's very clear that Daniel is he goes into quite a uh, pretty good detail about the fourth beast. I mean, it's the these visions that Daniel talks about. This is really full of great stuff. You look here. Let's do it this way. Let's see what I got. Now, in Daniel, you'll notice here in Daniel 8, talks about the daily sacrifice, the daily sacrifice, and the daily sacrifice, and then what we read here, uh, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And in a verse 11, or a chapter 11, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. In verse 12, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away all right so it should be absolutely obvious that Jesus is the daily sacrifice he's taken away the sacrifice or the the you know the sacrifices and oblations that they once performed you know year after year or week after week or whatever um, and uh, he made himself the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. Of course, I think it's in, uh, oh, I forget, Hebrews 10. I, I forget. Here, let me see. Let me see if I can find something here. Da, 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 da. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Not possible. But Jesus laid down his life as the perfect and acceptable sacrifice and offering to God. Alright, and so this, I've never heard of this name. Here, and so I mean, why are you pointing to people? What you, you got to believe the word of God? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? All right, so, <clears throat> all right, so let me. There's one other thing in here that I want to point out here. Let me see something here. Um, oh, <laughs> so if you come from the camp that says Jesus fulfilled the first three and a half years of Daniel, I mean that's, I mean that's just, I don't, I didn't know there was a camp. I didn't know that camp existed. What? the Bible actually says is in the midst of the week <laughs> again I, I, I want to go back to I, I don't know if anybody's getting this so Daniel was trying to figure out the 70 years I thought am I wrong about this Where am I at here? I thought... Oh, right there in front of my face. Alright. Alright. 70 years. Okay, get your calculator out. 70 years, and then the angel comes and says, consider the vision 70 weeks. Alright, so if you get your calculator out and you punch in the numbers, you realize... Okay. You can equate a week with a year okay um, but 
here's the problem. How many days in a week? Seven. Right? Seven days in a week. So if a week equals a year, you see where I'm getting at here? If a week equals a year, you figured it out yet? If a week equals a year, three and a half days would equal a half a year, six months. I'm, I'm not going by that idea. I'm not going by that idea at all. Okay. I'm going by what these people claim. That one week is seven years. That's not supported by anything at all in Daniel mind. And the best you can make of it is six months. But they don't say six months. The whole seven year tribulation is based on this these verses here in, in Daniel 9. The whole thing, the whole doctrine of the seven year tribulation is based on this right here. This is it, folks, I'm telling you. And just listen to them. They'll tell you. Daniel 9 is talking about the Antichrist and one week is a year. Or one week is uh, seven years is what they say. <laughs> it, I, bet, I mean, dog's sakes man 70 years 70 weeks and then all of a sudden magically a week turns into seven years I mean you're just making stuff up all right so, and this is what happens when you don't trust the Bible and yet trust what other men are saying and then you actually read the Bible and it's you got problems man you got big problems. It's incredible. So, uh, you know, I think this is enough. I just want to point this out and make this very clear that Jesus is the one who makes an end of sins. He makes reconciliation for iniquity and brings in the everlasting covenant. And he's the one that laid down his life, causing the sacrifice and oblation to cease, which does not still continue that which by the way sacrifices were never ended and they continued to sacrifice no they didn't and no they don't I mean maybe they did some of them individually I can't you know I mean you could go out in your backyard and perform a sacrifice the devils can do that all day and all night okay but the sacrifices in the temple of God and all that sort of stuff that was ordained and um, perfect or you know I don't know how to how do you say uh, orchestrated by um, Moses and Aaron and all all back way back when that doesn't that's ended that ended when Jesus laid down his life that ended he became the sacrifice and so I guess you could say there was a period of correction uh, to get everybody straight on who Jesus was, uh, but they don't. They did not continue the sacrificing. They don't do it today. It it ended. They don't do it today. And anybody that says that sacrifices never ended, they're just lying straight up line because they don't do it today they don't they absolutely do not and a lot of people ask why don't they continue why don't they continue you know if they're Jews and they don't believe Jesus is Christ why don't they continue to do sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament and the Jews will always come up with a goofy answer and I don't even care what it is I've heard it a number of times and it never makes sense. Not the first time, not the last time. Never makes any sense. And the, I mean, the, the reason is obvious is because Jesus did it. He's the one that offered his body as the, sac 
perfect sacrifice, the perfect offering to God. Okay. Um, I suppose if they did continue that, that would bring more light to what Jesus had done. You know what I mean? Because people will be asking, well, here you are spilling the blood of bulls and goats and it's broadcast on CNN every year or every week or whatever and you know for hours right because this wouldn't be a 10 minute event this would be hours broadcast on CNN and on Fox News and people would ask well hey how do you compare that with what Jesus had done I mean, it would be an eye-opener, wouldn't it? I mean, people would realize just how wrong and how foolish these people are. And of course, uh, you know, the serpent is more subtle than any creature that the Lord God has made. And so, in an effort to keep everything subtle... They come up with some phony reason why they don't still do it. Okay, and they don't. They don't still do it. They don't. This guy is just straight up lying. Which, by the way, sacrifices were never ended. Yes, they were. They don't still do it today. They do not still do it today. Okay, so that's enough, I think. Um, uh, you know... I appreciate uh, you know people actually. Hey, this is what I believe, um, and I'm going to share with you what I believe. I appreciate that, but I'm going to correct you because I care for you and I care for others, and I want the truth to be out there. I feel like I would be it, I would be full of hate if I heard a lie and did not at least try to correct the person that believes a lie if I let that person go on believing a lie that's hatred on my part isn't it I, I don't want people to be in deception right I don't understand people sometimes you know I, I'm you know there have been a few times in my life when I called somebody the wrong name and they won't correct me hey Joe how you doing today Joe well his name's Bob I find out like three weeks later, this guy's name is Bob. Well, I've been calling him Joe. Well, it turns out Bob, he don't he don't really care for me. I don't know why. He don't like me. He don't want to get to know me. He don't care about. It's not just me. It's a lot of people. But he don't. You know. So I. I it's a. To me, it's a show of hatred. When you don't correct somebody. It's like, hey, I'm I'm. Uh, you're beneath me. I don't I don't care what you, comes out of your mouth so I'm just gonna ignore everything you say and just move on my way I mean, that's how I view it right I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody uh, listening but seriously if somebody is wrong about something and, and just just you know loud about it I mean the loudest people are the most wrong the loudest people are the most ignorant people and here they are hey no incorrect weird you're absolutely ridiculous. I'm surprised you didn't use the word stupid, or maybe you did. I don't know. It's one of my favorite words. But uh, you read this and you see that this person is saying the Antichrist takes away sins. It's unbelievable. That's what they believe. Seven year tribulation, that's not in the Bible anywhere. And the idea that the Antichrist makes an end of sins. It's not anywhere in the Bible. It's unbelievable. In there. And again, Breezy's not getting this um, from the Bible. They're, Breezy's getting this from somebody else. And this is the problem when you don't trust the Word of God. All right, You're going to fall into these false doctrines. You're going to fall into deception. And this is this should have been evidenced in your life. I know it was evidenced in my life when I believed that I was a super monkey. I believed what men were telling me. I believed what the teacher told me. The teacher told me I was a super monkey and I believed it. I believed it for years and I argued strongly in favor of super monkeyism or whatever, evolutionism, whatever you want to call it. 
I believed in all that stuff. And I believed that UFO aliens were going to come and save us. And <laughs> it took me a long time to realize how absolutely foolish all that is. And, you know, there's a, a, a great Who song. Yeah, I'm not a big Who fan. But there's this great Who song where they say, I won't be fooled again. Right? I, I don't remember the name of the song right now, but I won't be fooled again. Yeah, you know, I really... I got the red butt because I've been fooled so often in my life for so long. I've been made a fool for believing in all the lies. And so now, I say to hell with what other people are teaching. And I'm just going to trust what the Bible says. Because the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is God. It, you have to believe in a perfect Bible. Otherwise, you don't believe in any Bible at all. So I'm going to believe the Bible. Let God be true. Every man a liar.